Hello everyone! I hope you are having a beautiful day and if you know me at all you know these are my favorite kind of days. They are what I call open window days where you can just throw open those windows and open the doors and just let all that fresh air in and after you know months of like a hot humid sort of weather it just feels so good to do that again. I gotta tell you I mean I have missed that a lot. So as soon as we started having those days again as we're in this transition from summer to fall, I started looking forward to doing that. And today is one of those beautiful, perfect days to do so. And, you know, speaking of hot and humid days, you know, when you do think of that, how do you spend those days? You know, a lot of times when you picture those hot, humid days, you picture, you know, spending time by the pool or by the lake, by the ocean, you know, somewhere to keep cool. And I was thinking about something to do with that today. I was thinking about water. You know, how much do we take water for granted? You know, like if you're in the shower, just how good it feels, how quickly water can cool you down, how quickly it can warm you up when you're cold, like taking a hot bath in the middle of winter when you're chilled. It's just a wonderful feeling. Water is such an incredible blessing. It obviously satisfies your thirst. And then when we have things like this, when it's heated up and you can make tea or coffee, just that warm, delicious, you know, feeling of water, you know, flavored water, you know, going down your throat or making lemonade or something like that. Like water is such a versatile thing and so much of our world is made up of water, but it feels so incredibly soothing, doesn't it? You know, it's, it's just like I said, one of those things that you just take for granted, like a breeze, like how good a breeze feels on your skin. Like what kind of world would we live in if we didn't have these lovely little breezes that, you know, would brush against us? You know, if the air was just always stagnant, if we had a world, of course, we wouldn't live without water. But, you know, if we just didn't get the pleasure, if it wasn't, if the world wasn't created in a way that water felt or tasted the way it does, you know, when it's cool, the way it feels like, you know, on a hot day when you jump in that pool or like I said, you get in that hot tub on that cool night, you know, that feeling is so incredible. Even just taking a shower, you know, feeling the, the pelting of the water or just, you know, how it just like warms you up. And it also does what it does something else incredibly amazing, which is it cleans us, you know, this thing that wets us all up, you know, it like cleans us and it's such a cool thing. And, you know, I had actually posted about this, but I couldn't help it. I had to bring this up because what else does water do? It brings life. And I brought this up already in a post because this was so incredible to me. I had a neighbor you know, she has this beautiful garden and I just talked to her for the first time because she's newer in the neighborhood and she lives a couple houses down and I was talking to her about her garden and she has a gorgeous garden. Okay. Like beautiful. And I had the honor of getting a little tour of everything she had. But then a couple days later, I get a note from her online that says she left something on my doorstep and here's what she left. I mean, is this not perfection? Look at this. Oh my goodness, these are so beautiful. Zinnias and uh, dahlias and I don't know. She's just got, the, like, she's very inspiring to me. I'm actually um, taking notes for my own garden because there are some things I want to do next year. But what, this would not be possible without what? Look how she even put the little bow there. Oh my goodness, this was the sweetest thing. Anyway, a beautiful gift like this was only made possible by this. You know, this is the life sustaining part of making this. Yes, you need other elements as well, but without water, you can have all those elements and nothing. And you can still actually grow things just in water alone. Uh, you know, that's the funny thing. But anyway, I just wanted to show you because I think like, um, um, you know, just thinking about somebody taking, you know, cuttings from their very own garden was so precious because, you know, you have to cut up what's, you know, out there that you're enjoying. And I just thought these were gorgeous. So I did want to show that, but I also wanted to make this point about the water. And so it got me thinking about how much water symbolism is in our faith and in scripture. And so first of all, I just want to bring up, you know, what is the main thing when we think about water in our faith? And that is baptism. You know, I was looking at John 3, 5, and it says, Jesus answered, very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the spirit. And then 1 Peter 3, 19, 20 to 19 to 22 says, after being made alive, 
this is talking about Jesus, went and made proclamations to the imprisoned spirits, to those who were disobedient long ago when God waited patiently in the days of Noah while the ark was being built. In it, only a few people, eight in all, were saved through water. And this water symbolizes baptism that now saves you also, not the removal of dirt from the body, but the pledge of a clear conscience toward God. It saves you by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at God's right hand with angels, authorities, and powers in submission to him. Like that is some strong symbolism right there when you look back at the flood and what that water represented to God. And I was also thinking about how Jesus himself, you know, is um, is the one that we seek for living water. So I was looking, okay, we're going to still stick in the Old Testament for a moment. Because David, while he was in the desert of Judah in Psalm 63, he says, You God are my God, earnestly I seek you. I thirst for you. My whole being longs for you in a dry and parched land where there is no water. You know, there's something terrible about being thirsty, isn't there? There's just a terrible feeling to it. And there's nothing more satisfying than when you are thirsty and you're, and you're parched and you come across, you know, some source of water and you drink it. And Psalm 23, 2 says, He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. There's also something about the calmness of water. It's not just when we drink it. It's also, you know, the the storms of life can be very rugged and they can, and you think about the storms and the sea and how destructive they can be. Water is very powerful. So to have calm waters, to have quiet waters, and when God leads us beside those quiet waters, what that means in our life, the peace that comes from quiet waters. And then Isaiah 12, 3 says, with joy, you will draw water from the wells of salvation. You know, just that symbolism, again, of drawing water from the wells of salvation. And that is joy. There's joy in that, too. It's not just peace, but it's also joy. So going back to Jesus, I just wanted to read a few more verses on this topic of water. You know, um, John 7, 37 through 38 says, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. So he represents that living water um, and that that same living water will flow from within us when we come to him and drink of who he is. And you can imagine they may have been confused by that, uh, you know, um, what that meant in light of salvation, because it was still without being able to have that discernment, that spiritual discernment, those kinds of things would have been kind of confusing. Like when he does say, Who, whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood will have eternal life. You know, they didn't understand things like that. Um, and I look at Revelation 22, 17, the spirit and the bride say, come and let the one who hears say, come, let the one who is thirsty come and let the one who wishes take the free gift of the water of life. This is such strong symbolism about what water represents. And he is the creator. He created water. So he understands more than anybody just how significant water is to our existence, how much of a necessity it is. And when he talks about living water, when he talks about water that you will never thirst, you know, um, John 4, 13 through 15 says, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, sir, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. There's a satisfaction in him that goes beyond that temporary satisfaction that we have when we drink water on this earth. You know, it is very satisfying in the moment, but we will thirst again. So unless we have constant um, access to water, you know, it's like we're going to go back and need it again and again and again. But Jesus Christ is the one who satisfies eternal 
eternally, that we will never have to thirst again. And um, again, that symbolism is so incredible when you think, when you take a drink of water next time and you think about how good that feels in the moment or when you're bathing in it, what that feels like, you know, how it cleans, how it refreshes, you know, that we have that in Christ. And then last but not least, I wanted to read Revelation 21, 6 that says, he said to me, meaning um, Christ, it is done. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will give water without cost. <laughs> From the spring of the water of life. To the thirsty, I will give water without cost. I mean, you have to buy bottled water. You have to pay your city for water unless you have a well, you know, and even then sometimes you still have to pay for the pump. But what he's offering is this incredible, eternal, eternally satisfying water and without cost from the spring of the water of life. That is what we are given. That is the gift that God has given us that we have to look forward to for eternity if we are in him. So just wanted to share those thoughts today because I think sometimes the most profound truths are found in the most simple examples. And, you know, Jesus was all about using those everyday examples to make his point. And I think these verses here make the point of what water is and how it's significant in light of the living water. And so today I am thankful that God satisfies our thirst and that he comes and he brings life to a dry and parched land and that he offers that and he shows that throughout his word and that that is what we are promised. And so I hope you have a beautiful, blessed and satisfied in the Lord day.